Hello everybody. This video accompanies Notebook 1 of the series of videos Exploratory Computing with Python. My name is Mark Bucker and I work at the Delft University of Technology. Today we will learn what the IPython Notebook is, we take our first steps in Python programming and we learn how to make a graph. First of all we have to start the IPython Notebook. In this video we use the Anaconda distribution of Python. On your Mac, try to find the Anaconda Launcher, which may very well be located in the root directory on your hard drive. On Windows, go to the Start button, the Anaconda tab, and start the Anaconda Launcher. Once you've started the launcher, you get several options, and what you want to do is launch the IPython Notebook. Once you launch the IPython Notebook, your default web browser will open with the IPython Notebook inside. Note that if you use Windows Explorer as your default web browser, things will look a little different than all the other web browsers. So it's recommended to use something else like Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. Once you open the IPython notebook, your web browser starts and you see what's called the dashboard. The dashboard starts up in the home directory um, that Anaconda has installed. In this case, I have a few files in my home directory. I can open any of these IPython notebooks or I can start a new notebook. So let's click on new notebook and a new notebook opens. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Here we see what's called a code cell. We are now inside the IPython notebook and inside the code cell we can type Python code. For example, we can type two plus three. And then if we hit shift enter, we execute this command and we get the answer five. That seems about correct. Notice that I added some space here. I could have just typed two plus three without the spaces. I also would have gotten five, but it's highly recommended to add the spaces because it makes the code much more easy to read. Of course, we don't want to just use Python as a calculator. We want to start using variables. For example, we can say a is equal to 2, b is equal to 3, and then do a plus b. Again, the answer is 5. a is now a variable with the value 2 stored in it, b is a variable with the value 3 stored in it, and a plus b gives us 5. We could, of course, store the value of a plus b in a new variable called c c is equal to a plus b we execute that so we hit shift enter and now we don't get any output why not well because all the output is stored in the variable c if you want to know what the value of the variable c is we type print c a and c it is indeed five if you want to make that print statement look slightly nicer we can for example say c equals comma so now this first part in red is called a string it's just text and it's between quotes you can use either single or double quotes as long as you begin and end with the same one then a comma then the, val the variable c and if we execute these commands we hit shift enter and we get c is equal to 5 printed to the screen note that each code cell has a number the number indicates the order in which the code cells were executed. So if I execute code, this code cell, which has now number six once more, let's shift enter, it gets number seven. If I execute this one here again, it gets to be number eight, and so on. Once you define a variable in a code cell, it is available in all the other code cells. So I can write here print a and it will nicely give you the value 2, which is what A is. But I can also go here and print A. A is also known in this code cell above, because I first executed this one, then I executed that one. But in general, it's nice to, um, to execute all code cells in the right order. So let's get rid of this statement. Here at the top, there is a command cell, and then you can do run all then it will execute all cells from the top to the bottom, number 11, 12, and 13 now, and see they all work fine. 
The next thing we want to do is we want to calculate the values of our parabola. For example, the parabola y is equal to x minus 1 times x plus 1. And then I hit Shift Enter. And oops, I get an error message. When you get an error message, start reading the error at the bottom. Here it says name error. Name x is not defined. That seems correct. Here I do x minus 1, but Python, IPython, doesn't know yet what x is. So first I have to give x a value, say x is equal to 0. If I now hit Shift Enter, it works. I get no error message, and if I say print y, it prints the value to the screen, and let me see if that's correct. When x is equal to 0, you get minus 1 times plus 1 is indeed minus 1. So that seems about right. What I want to do is I want to make a graph of this parabola. So I have to calculate y for a bunch of values of x. First we have to make a bunch of values of x. And a bunch of values together is called an array. Now arrays are not part of standard Python. Arrays are defined in a package. And the package is called NumPy. There are many packages in Python. Um, and we will learn several of them. We'll start with NumPy. To be able to use functions that are in a package, you have to import it. Packages may be imported with the import statement. Import NumPy. Shift Enter. Now I can call any function in the NumPy package with the syntax NumPy dot and then the function name. What I want to do is I want to create a bunch of values x from minus 4 to plus 4, and I want to have 10 values. For that, there is a function called linspace that gives um, a number of values between a min and a max, and you can define how many values you want, and it spaces them linearly, hence the name linspace. So I type numpy.linspace, and I say open parenthesis, and then IPython helps me by telling me what the input arguments for the linspace function are. You have to give it a start value, a stop value, and then you can optionally give some other arguments. And the first one is the number of points you want. If you don't specify the number of points, you get 50. I want a few, a little fewer. For example, I go from x is minus 4 to plus 4, and I want 10 points. I hit shift enter, and I get 10 points evenly spaced from minus 4 to plus 4. Now what I don't like yet is that I have to type numpy dot every time I want to call a function from numpy. And what I don't like about it is that numpy is too, there's too many letters. The standard in Python programming is to rename the numpy package to something else and the, the, uh, the standard is to call it N, NP. And you can do that by by typing import numpy snp. So now instead of having to type numpy.linspace, I can type np.linspace. First of all, I have to execute this command, shift enter, and then I type here np.linspace. And I get the same answer. Of course, I want to store that in an array. In array x, this, is, this bunch of values are called an array. Um, I, I store it now in the variable x, and I can calculate y is equal to x minus 1 times x plus 1, and I can say print y, and it will calculate the values of y at all those 10 x points. The next thing I want to do is make a plot of x versus y, or y versus x. For that, we need plotting statements. And plotting statements are available in a package called matplotlib. So what we do is we import matplotlib. And matplotlib has many functionalities, and we only want to have the plotting part. So you have to kind of learn what to import. Import matplotlib.pyplot. That's all the plotting statements in matplotlib. And we're going to call it plt. So any function in that package will be called plt.something. And we give it one more statement. We say uh, percent and percent sign matplotlib inline. 
What that will do is that it will create any graphs we make, it will put in our notebooks instead, instead of in separate windows. We hit Shift Enter, and now we can make a plot by typing plt.plot, and we want to plot x versus y. We hit Shift Enter, and there is our graph. That looks pretty nice. Now, first of all, I want to st uh, make sure that I realize this is a somewhat magical command, and you're going to have to learn that. But what you normally do in a notebook is you first import all the packages you're going to need, um, and after that, you can call all the, pa um, the functions in those packages. Here, I created a graph of x versus y, but it doesn't look very smooth yet. Why doesn't it look very smooth? Well, it's only 10 points. I want more points. Well, that's easy to fix. I go back here. I say x is lint space from minus 4 to 4. Let's do 100 points. I hit, I get rid of the print y statement because else it will print 100 values to the screen. I hit shift enter. Then I don't have to import this again because I've already done that. I plot x versus y and I get a very nice graph. Very smooth line. But I want to have, of course, labels on the axes. For that, the plotting package, PLT, um, has functions called xlabel. And what should we call the x-axis? Well, maybe x-axis, axis. Um, note that the argument of the xlabel function is a string. So it has to be between quotes, beginning quote, end quote. And we can add something to the y-axis. Let's call the y-axis parabola. And we hit shift enter. And you see it nicely puts uh, <coughs> a name along the y-axis and a name along the x-axis. Just out of interest, let me show you what happens if we forget to put those quotes. If I hit enter, it says name parabola is not defined. It doesn't know what to do with this. It thinks parabola must be a variable, but I've never defined the variable. It doesn't recognize it as a string because it's not between quotes. So let's go back and make it a quote and a quote. Now it's a string. It knows it's a word that has to be printed along the vertical axis. And, per, and the graph looks the way we want it to look. Before we end this video, I want to show one more thing about getting help for a function. Like I showed, if you type the function plt.plot, for example, in the open parenthesis, then a little box pops up with, addition, with help for the function. In this case, for the plotting one, it doesn't look very useful. Why not? Because you don't see all the help there is. If you click here on the little plus sign, this area expands and you can even scroll through it. So it tells you all the different options there are for using the plot function. When you are done with looking at the additional help, you click the X here and it goes away. That's all I got for you today. I hope to see you next time.